want everybody to lift up your hands right now. Welcome in a fresh wave of God's glory right there. Welcome in a fresh wave of God's Shekinah glory in this room. I feel it. I feel a fresh wave of glory coming in here. Come on, receive that fresh wind. Before we move on, I want you just to begin to decree that fresh wind. Come on. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Come on, begin to decree that. Fresh wind, fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Fresh wind. Look at your neighbor and say, I prophesy a fresh wind over you. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. 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 Let's get ready to go into the word. We didn't get a chance to do it today because we had a couple of things that we don't normally do that we've incorporated today. But we're gonna make sure before we leave here today, we decree over these revival banners. How many of y'all know that there's a wind of revival that's blowing through? And so we're gonna to begin to decree that for today. Hallelujah. Let's go into the word today. We're in a series called Attached. How many of you all have been blessed by this series? Attached, attached. This has been a life changing series that has Riandu Surabata. I feel that oil coming in here, y'all. Something's about to break loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. 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 I feel something here. I feel something in here. I feel something in here. Woo. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. 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 Fresh w
Just tell somebody there's a fresh wind blowing your way. Tell somebody there's healing in the wind. Tell them there's freedom in the wind. There's fresh oil in the wind. There's a breakthrough in the wind. There's a fresh wind and it's blowing my way. It's blowing my way. It's blowing my way. It's a fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. We decree it. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. We decree it. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. We call it. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. It's blowing. Fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. It's blowing. Fresh wind, fresh wind. up into this um, let me tell you what's about to happen here the oil of deliverance is about to flow through here today I feel it I sense it let's go to the word Joshua chapter 5 Intercessors, I'm going to call you under a new name today. We've been crafting this, working on this through our Issachar class. And I'm going to call you a new name, our Shamar team. And I will explain to you what that word Shamar means. It is a Hebrew word. It is a Hebrew word of warfare, of a watchman. When they offered God Shamar worship, it regulated emotions, minds, wills. We'll talk more about that in the coming days. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 5, verse 1 through 2. And then I'm going to jump over to Romans chapter 2 and verse 29. Shamar team, I need you praying today. I ain't ever preached this word before. And this is a very intense word. To our online audience, we once again welcome you and greet you. We're not going off the air. We're going to continue to do what we do. For those of you that are sowing, we thank you for sowing. We thank you for supporting this ministry. Joshua 5, verse 1 through 2, it says, And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites 
which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel." At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. I want to read verse 2 again. At that time, the Lord said, after a victory, after a major victory, and people started getting afraid because they got a reputation now. He said, make these sharp knives and cut them again. The children of Israel the second time. Time. Let's jump over to our next scripture, Romans chapter 2 and verse 29. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. I'm going to read that second clause again. And circumcision is that of the heart. I want to minister uh, from the subject crafted in the cutting, crafted in the cutting crafted in the cutting. Father, I thank you for your anointing that's here. I thank you for your Shekinah glory that's present. I thank you that you are healing, delivering, setting people free even as we are here in this moment of worship. We thank you for this Kairos time, this prophetic time that you are indeed in the midst of us. And Spirit of the living God, I ask that your word will go through this place and begin to cut off everything that's not like you. Begin to shape us, mold us, recreate us so that you can be glorified through us and we thank you God that when we leave this place we're going to leave this place under a new anointing, under a new strength and a greater level of wisdom we give you the praise, the glory the honor in the strong name of Jesus Christ that we pray all that agree say it is so and so it is on the way to your seat say I was crafted in the cutting I want to share something with you that's extremely important. I want you to follow me because I'm going to lay a foundation here that I'm going to go really fast, okay? So if you don't get the foundation, when I start building, you're going to get lost. You cannot hold on to a revelation that you don't understand. Information that you don't understand is of no value to you. Information that you don't understand is not applicable to your life. Even though it is practical, if you don't understand it, you cannot apply it to your life. It does us no good to offer up any level of worship, sacrifice, action, or behavior that is not rooted in wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. This is the thing. Many people don't understand there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. The word knowledge and the word wisdom are not synonymous. They do not share the same meaning. Knowledge and wisdom do not share the same meaning. Knowledge is information. Wisdom is, watch this, it is the ability to apply the information. Knowledge is information. Wisdom is the ability to apply information. The gateway between knowledge and wisdom is understanding. I'll give you a a, a brief analogy, a brief example. Um, uh, If your car uh, uh, breaks down, you're unable to get your car uh, cranked up. You know that the issue is uh, uh, the... um, the, the ignition, but you don't understand how it works. You don't understand how it works. You know what the problem is, but you have no understanding on how to fix it, okay? Um, someone that has knowledge and understanding is someone that can tell you this is the problem, this is the issue, watch this, but uh, the person can also begin to give you details concerning how that thing happened. Just because you can give details and offer understanding of what we know does not mean that you have wisdom either. Why is that? Um, It is the same as if you have a smoking doctor. If you have a smoking doctor, the doctor can tell you why smoking is not a good idea. They can tell you that it can cause lung cancer, but they don't have the discipline to apply what it is that they know. 
So there is a correlation between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. The problem that we are having in the body of Christ and in the world is that people don't understand that if you lack understanding and you lack wisdom, you will not be able to see any breakthrough in your life. If you just have information, you know that Jesus Christ died for you and you know about the power of the blood. That is great. But if you don't understand how the blood works, you don't understand the wisdom of the blood, you don't understand the symbolism and the meaning of the blood, you can be drawn away through the spirit of deception. Understanding is your power and your buffer against the spirit of deception. Now, why is this important? This is important because in order for you to become all God is crafting and creating for you to be, in order for you to become everything that God is calling for you to become, it requires that there are vessels in your life that have the ability to give you understanding and wisdom. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, who are you around? Look at someone else and say, who are you around? Can I share something? you. Uh, whenever the enemy wants to attack a city, a region, or a people, the enemy begins to tear apart at their infrastructure. The enemy begins to tear apart at the things that unify them and brings them together. Why is that? Because in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. When you come into the company of those that possess wisdom, wisdom will rescue you from a lifetime of trauma and trouble. Wisdom will rescue you from certain levels of warfare. It does no good for you to even pray without wisdom. If you pray without wisdom, you can pray curses on yourself and not even know it. If worship without wisdom, you will think that anything that speaks in tongues and works under shouting music has the anointing of God. When you worship without wisdom, wisdom is what gives you access to be able to apply what it is that you feel in this room. If you go down to the car lot after this worship encounter and you say, give me the keys to a Mercedes Benz, I want to test drive it, they're going to let you test drive it, they're going to let you smell the leather, they're going to let you test Take it up to the gas station. They're going to let you take it up to Walmart. They're going to let you drive all the way around the corner. But after you get finished driving that car and you get back to the dealership, they're going to say, give me those keys. Because without paying for it, you cannot take it home. Wisdom is the price that releases wealth in your life. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about a uh, 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 joy Peace, understanding, revelation. Wisdom is the key, the principal thing. That's why the Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all thy getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4 and 7. This is what you must understand. I want you to hear this. The enemy has released an attack against the anointing and the spirit. And some of you are going to get uncomfortable. You're going to be okay. The enemy has released an attack against the anointing and the spirit of a father. Now, when I say father, I am not talking about gender. Gender is a social construct. Father is a familial construct. I am not talking about gender. I am talking about the anointing, the grace, and the spirit of a father. When you understand the anointing and the assignment of the spirit of a father, when you understand that grace and you understand that wisdom, when you understand the assignment of you having spiritual parental figures in your life, you will realize that there are some things in your spirit that cannot be released until you get around some people that have the wisdom keys to unlock what it is in your your belly and in your spirit and if you lack understanding and you are still broken from your childhood you will use your coping mechanisms to try to create relationships without the wisdom to maintain them 
I need you to understand something that the assignment of the enemy was to cause you pain in your childhood concerning your parental figures so that you would not have the ability to receive or accept the spirit of correction, the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit of discipline that comes through the spirit of a father. And many of us in the body of Christ, we have potential, but potential unmanifested becomes annoying. And it becomes annoying because at some point we expect what's in you to manifest and materialize. Somebody shout manifest. Can I share something with you that is so important for you to know? Can I tell you something? God, when he introduces himself to mankind, introduces himself to us. Watch this. Our God, the eternal God, Yahweh, the true and living God, introduces himself not through statues, not through ornaments, uh, 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 not through graven images, not uh, 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 sitting on seats of, of, of temples, not through uh, 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 animalistic figures that have been personified, but introduces himself through familial and parental terms, introduces himself as father, as son, and as Holy Spirit. There is a correlation, I feel the anointing here, between understanding God and understanding the power of familial structure, which means if you have been damaged through your familial relationships, there is going to be a weapon against you from fully receiving the full manifestation of God. Because the moment that God comes to you or through somebody else, and it sounds like the person that was not damaged, there, you cannot receive it. I'm going to preach this in here. The moment that it comes to you through someone that, and this is the first thing that you do. Well, I'm grown and ain't nobody going to tell me what to do and I do what I want to do. I'm grown. You're not my mama and you're not my daddy. You didn't listen to them either. You're still bitter with them even if I was your mama and your daddy. The reason why you can't listen to what's being told to you is because you're still mad at your mama and you're still mad at your daddy. And so there are elements of God that you cannot receive because you like it when the Lord blesses you. You like it when the Lord gives you a boo. You like it when the Lord gives you a car, but the moment that the Lord starts cutting at you, you cannot receive it. And can I tell you something? If you cannot receive the manifestation of God as a parental figure, then you will be limited on your growth in the next level, which means that all you will have is gift, but no anointing. All you will have is the ability to make people feel goosebumps, but nobody gets healed. All you have is the ability to make people feel better, but by Tuesday they are still bound why because it is only through the processing in you that you can lead them out you can't take them no further than you can go can I tell you something am I preaching too hard can I tell you something look at your neighbor say neighbor you got to get cut can I share something with you? God institutes something. I feel the anointing in here. God institutes something, and this is what he says I'm going to do. He says what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish something called covenant. Somebody say covenant. When you have a covenant, can I share something with you? Uh, let, me, let me do this real quick. Let me give you an example. Adjutant Marshawn, uh, uh, come in for a second. Uh, uh, Minister Brick, come in for a second. I want you to stand right here, and I want you to stand right here. So what happens in a covenant, in particular during these times, I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. When, when, what happened in particular during these times, uh, uh, in the times of covenant, uh, what they would do is this. I want you to pay attention. You would have two families face each other. I want you to face each other. You you would have the farmer family and you would have the warrior family because most people then were either uh, uh, warriors or they were farmers. So what you would have is the farmer family that can, that can make food, they can grow crops, they have the ability to till the soil, they have the ability to till the ground, they have the ability to get that thing together. Can't nobody sow clothes like they can, can't nobody make corn like they can, can't nobody grow watermelon like they can. They have the ability to till the ground. The problem is, is that people keep coming and stealing all their food. People keep coming and robbing them of all of their crops. 
over here you have the warrior family. Now the warrior family, I want you to watch this. The warrior family can fight. They can cut your neck off. They can kill you with a straw. They can kill you with a shoe. They know how to take you out of here. They will cut you up. They know how to fight. They've been fighting for 10 generations. They came out the womb fighting. They came out the womb ready for war. That's the first thing that they got in their hand was a bottle and a sword. They know how to fight. The only problem with them is they ain't got nothing to eat. So they are starving. So this family says, you have something I need. And this family says, you have something I need. So what they do is they come together and they make a covenant agreement. And what they say is, uh, what we're going to do is for generations, uh, my family is going to protect your family and your family is going to protect my family. Now watch this. The only way that the covenant can become legal is there has to be a spilling of blood. In other words, now they had to kill a lamb, I feel the Holy Ghost, and sprinkle the lamb's blood on the ground. And each family member would walk through the blood. And the moment they walked through the blood, everything that this family had, they now have. And everything that this family had, they now have. So God looks down on mankind and says, you know what? I'm going to take this concept and I'm going to do something. I want you two to go sit down. Thank you. I want you two to go sit down. I want you to come here, uh, Anthony. I'm going to call you Abraham. God looks at a man by the name of Abraham and says, okay, I'm going to apply this concept and this agreement. God says, Abraham, this is what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to bless your seed. I'm going to enlarge your territory. I'm going to increase you for generations. I'm going to increase you more and more, you and your children. Everybody that's engrafted into the covenant is going to be blessed because of the fact that they come through your lineage either by way of natural DNA or spiritual DNA. I'm going to bless you and through you all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Can I tell you what he did? The Bible said, watch this, that he uh, he, he could not find uh, anybody greater than himself so God swore by himself and when he swore by himself, the Bible said uh, watch this, that he said what I want you to do is all of your sons I want you to get them circumcised. Somebody say circumcised. Thank you. I want you to get them circumcised. Now you've got to understand this. God institutes circumcision and says you cannot have access to the covenant until you have been circumcised. In other words, you don't get authority unless you can handle being cut. It's quiet in here. You don't get authority unless you can handle being cut. In other words, God says the relationship ain't real unless I can cut you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying in here. The relationship ain't real unless I can cut you. Stop telling me how wonderful your relationship is and how fabulous these two weeks that y'all have been together is. You ain't got no relationship until somebody has been cut. Y'all not going to preach it here. You don't have a relationship unless you your marriage, your partnership, your relationship can survive the cutting. Look at your neighbor and say, can you handle the cut? I need to preach this in here. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear this. I want you to understand something. This is the reason why when it comes down to Moses, I'm about to make some of y'all uncomfortable because you don't read your Bible. Do you not know that God was about to kill Moses in Exodus chapter 4? Y'all don't know that, do you? God was about to kill Moses in Exodus chapter 4. Why was God about to kill Moses? The Bible said he was the meekest man on the earth. The Bible said that Moses gave God no problems. Moses gave God no issues. Moses gave God no trouble. Why would it be that God... God, Yahweh, the eternal creator of heaven and earth, is about to kill Moses in Exodus chapter 4. It is because, I want you to catch this, it is because Moses is trying to lead by way of the rod, he don't want a knife. Moses wants to lead by way of the rod, but he does not want a knife. He has a rod which is symbolic of the miracles, the parting of the Red Sea, the ten plagues of Egypt. But when God said, you need to circumcise these crazies, he refused to do it. And some of you all are ineffective in your leadership because you like leading with the rod, but you don't want a knife. 
It's quiet in here. You like leading with a rod, but you don't want a knife. Can I tell you something? You got to have the rod in one hand and a knife in the, I feel the Holy Ghost in here, and a knife in the other one. The Bible said that when God had came down to kill Moses, I ain't making this up, Exodus chapter 4, go read it. When God was about to kill Moses, the Bible said that Zipporah walked in. Oh my God. The woman of God came in and she circumcised her son and she threw the circumcision at Moses' feet. And the Bible said that God departed and left. What just happened in this text? Woo. What God uh, 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 understood when Zipporah cut off of the circumcision of her son and threw it at Moses' feet, what she declared was, you are capable of cutting. When God saw the cut, he backed up and remembered his covenant with Abraham. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? He, oh, listen, I know I'm messing with your theology, but can I tell you something? There is something about cutting that will preserve your life. There is something about cutting. There is something about the fire and the storm that will extend your day if you would be honest it wasn't until God slapped you in your mouth and the Lord calmed you down and pulled you off of the strip pole and pulled you out of a strange bed that you are still here you are here because the Lord cut you and all of you didn't come to Jesus because they played some sad song and some hymnals some of y'all came to the Lord because if you didn't come to Jesus you were going to lose your life I wish I had somebody in here that said he gave me no other choice but to worship him. Can I tell you something that I need you to understand? I want you to catch this. Watch this. You got to understand that is the reason why God raises up Joshua. God raises up Joshua and he tells Joshua, listen, I need you to do something. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He said, I need you to do something. He said, y'all are going over into the promised land. That's great. He said, y'all are winning battles. That's great great but this is the problem I can't take them into a new place because all of the people with you Joshua are not the same people that were under Moses all of the people that are with you can, can I stop right here see can I share something with you there's a reason why the generation of Moses had to die the reason why the generation of Moses had to die was because Moses taught a leadership that was led of a rod but was afraid of a knife and can I tell you something? It is dangerous because Moses did not go into the promised land because he was too emotionally attached to the dis watch this to the disobedience of the people of God. Can I share something with you? You don't get permission to disobey God just because of what his people did to you. Let me get in your face. You don't get permission to cancel your ministry, cancel your assignment, turn in your license because you upset with the people of God. You don't get permission to do that. And the very fact that you want to do that is a sign of your immaturity. You don't get to quit ministry just because people didn't say amen. You don't get to quit ministry just because they didn't want to hear your Bible story. You don't get to quit ministry just because they rolled their eyes. It's quiet in this church. It's quiet. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because we got desert babies in the body of Christ. We have too many desert babies. Many of us were not born and brought into the things of God and taught the ways of holiness. The wilderness raised us. We were not... The wilderness raised too many of us. We were not raised by spiritual mothers and fathers. We were raised in the wilderness. I'm preaching good in here. And can I tell you something? God told them, you got a bunch of desert babies on your hand. That if you take them into a new place, they're going to think that access is a sign of wisdom. And they have no idea that the only way you can get to the next level is I've got to cut all of the unnecessary mess out of your life in order to take you into the, it's quiet up in this. We were shouting a moment ago. Now it's real quiet. And can I tell you something? Because we want God to raise up the rod. Put up the rod and give me a car. Put up the rod and give me a man. Put up the rod and give me a new weed. Put up the rod and give me a new house. But can I tell you something? The Lord said that what I've been doing in your life over the last six months is I put the rod away and I've raised up a knife and I'm cutting everything out of you that does not look like me. I'm cutting everything out of you 
that does not resemble what it is I'm doing in your life. I'm cutting everything out of you that is not in alignment with my will. Somebody say, Lord, cut me. Woo. I need mature people here. Somebody say, Lord, cut me. If you don't cut me, I'll never make it. If you don't cut me, I'll never get the house. If you don't cut me, I can't keep a marriage. Some of you all are too sensitive. And the Lord said, in this season, I've got to cut everything off of you that's going to cause you to miss your next level. Circumcision gives the power, watch this, in order to circumcise, I'm not going to be graphic, you have to pull back and cut off. I said you got to pull back and cut off. In other words, there were some people, ooh, I wonder, I wonder how many, I'm just real curious how many people going to shout on this. There are some people that are not called to be your best friend. They are called to confront the parts of you that you refuse to bring to the altar. It's quiet in here. There are some people, I'm going to walk in this house, that are anointed to, to confront the parts of you that you don't want to surrender. There are some people that are not impressed with your singing, that are not impressed with your preaching, that are not impressed with your ability to teach a Sunday school, that will look you right in the eyes and say, yes, you can sing, yes, you can preach, and yes, you can dress. But the Lord said, I'm trying to deliver your attitude. Because the place is quiet in here. The place that I'm getting ready to take you to, I'm trying to take you just from before the hundreds to the millions. But the Lord said, I can't take you there until you allow me to cut you. Because I'm cutting some stuff out of you. You don't realize it, but you're going through surgery right now. And the only way that the surgeon can do the surgery is they got to put you under anesthesia. Now, some of you are fighting the anesthesia. You, you know, listen, some of you are fighting the anesthesia. The surgeon surgeon has got to make you still, put you down, and put you under in order to do operation in your spirit. The person being operated on doesn't get to control the operation. Well, I don't respond well to that. Don't cut me with that. I, I, I respond well to the smaller knives. You got to cut me with a small knife because when you cut me with a big knife, I got to do Listen, let me tell you something. Let me, let me explain something to you. The student does not control the lesson. The teacher does. And the Lord is saying what I'm trying to... Woo, I'm about to run. The Lord said what I'm trying to do in your life is I'm preparing you for the next level and the next dimension. Here's the problem. You ain't never been there before, which means you cannot instruct the GPS or how they get you to where you're trying to go. But I don't do well with people like that. The way I do well with it. No, the Lord knows what you, I, hear, I feel good in here. I said, the Lord, no, listen, listen. It is a foolish parent that lets a child determine their diet. It is a foolish parent that lets a child determine their discipline. You don't get to control how you are raised. The problem is, is that we're desert babies. This is what he said. I'm about to run. I'm about to shout too. He said, this is what I want you to do, Joshua. This, this, this blew my mind. Adjutant Marshawn, we got a social distance. Adjutant Marshawn. They just won a battle. Oh. They just won. They just had a victory. So it would seem like the appropriate to do, need to celebrate. Let's throw a party. Because you know, they were turning up. They were lit, they were real lit. They were all the way turned up. They was real lit, they was lit boots. You hear me? Lit, I'm from Atlanta, that means just twice as lit, boots. Lit boots, you hear me, just lit. Just, woo, woo, we just did it, we just did it, we just. And the next verse said, God said, now cut all of them. After you cut them, sit them down. What? I just sang the house down. I just preached the house down. I didn't understand why Bishop Raymond Monroe Trout of Harvest Time Apostolic Ministries, I would get done preaching and the room just bucking and shouting and, and falling out all over the floor, would pull me in the back. Him and First Lady Mother Judith Elizabeth Trout would pull me in the back. Anybody here that know Mother Trout know that she does not bite her tongue. Mother Trout will pull you in the back, look you in the eyes and say, that was all wonderful, but you still ain't done. 
Well, they just got finished shouting, but you're still not done. You, you still not finished. God still ain't finished processing. It's quiet in this room. God still ain't finished processing you. God still ain't finished. And I'm sitting up here with a bad attitude. And, and I, but you know what? And, and this, is what the, this is what the devil will do. They're trying to hold you back. And they don't see what's on the inside of you. And they don't see your greatness. They see your greatness, but they also see the thing that's standing in the way of your greatness. They see the thing that's standing in the way of your greatness. Well, I just got finished doing an event and it was packed out. And it was said, listen, and you're still not done being on the altar. You're still not done being processed. Just because you lay people out on the altar does not mean you get to evade the altar. Oh, you still got a season of purging that is quiet in here. You still got a season of purging that has to come. Can I share something with you? Can I share something with you? And next thing you know, a month or two later, I get into it with somebody in the fellowship hall and Mother Trout come by the fellowship hall and says, see, that's what I told you. That's what I know you ain't done. That's, that's the thing that God is after on this side of you. That's the thing that the Lord is after. Can I tell you? I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Can I tell you something? The Lord told me to tell you what I am doing is I am cunning you you in order to shift your capacity in other words I can't be graphic but the anatomical purpose of the circumcision freed them from being able to hold dirt what the Lord is saying is I'm cutting your capacity to hold dirt if you know all the gossip, the mess, and the tea, you ain't ready to be, it's quiet, it's, it's, it's all right. If you know everything that's going on with everybody, everybody business, and every single thing, in the, and every single thing that's happening, and every single thing, that, you ain't been cut enough. Because see, when you've been cut enough, you'll say, you know what, don't even tell me. Lord, have mercy on me, don't let it be me. And such was some of you. And you know what, God's still working on me, and let's just pray for her right now, because that's why you're telling me this, right? And so we can pray for her. So let's pray for her right now. Father, in Jesus' name, set her free, and Lord, set us free too. So lest we fall. Listen, 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 lest we fall. Every round that God takes you up, the more humble you should become. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due season. Look at your neighbor and say, he's going to exalt you in due season. Ah, yeah. Look at somebody say, he's going to pull you up in due season. I feel the anointing in here. Can I tell you something? The Lord told me to tell about 20 people in this room. Now listen, um... Some folks in this room have been going through on levels that some of y'all don't understand. Some folks, the enemy has been trying to tempt them to give up and quit because they've been feeling like they're going to lose their mind. I need to talk to y'all real quick. That said to God, I can't take no more. If one more thing happened, the Lord told me to tell you, you're not going to die and you're not going to lose your mind. The Lord told me to tell you that I'm not cutting you to kill you. I'm giving you cosmetic surgery. That by the time I get done pulling you out of this season, the thing that you thought you would never overcome, the pain from your childhood, the hurt, and all of the trauma, you're going to leave it in the surgeon's bucket. And when you get off of the surgery table and you get out of the, when you get out of the emergency room this time, somebody shout this time. This time, the Lord told me to tell you that I'm getting ready to give you another chance and the doors that were closed will be open and the chances that were denied will be released. He said, cut them a second time. Now listen, they had already been cut. It would seem like, God, I don't need to be cut again. I done fasted and prayed. What else can I give up? The Lord said, I wasn't after your stuff. I wasn't after your money. I wasn't after your health. I was after your heart because circumcision is that of the heart. The Lord said, if you... The Lord said, if you let me cut you, I'm going to take you to a new level. If you let me cut you, I'm going to bless your whole family. If you let me cut you, I'm going to take your ministry across the country and around the world. If you let me cut you, I'll break every stronghold that's been on your family for generations. And I'll raise up a new lineage of men that have the power to raise up sons that are not afraid to be cut. The Spirit of the Lord's too. The Spirit of the Lord said, what I'm getting ready to do is change and flip over this generation. And I'm birthing a new thing out of your spirit. Behold, I do a new thing. And it shall.
now spring forth. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm getting ready to give you new levels and new dimensions of power. Somebody shout in this house. Listen, we got to get out of here. And I'm trying to hold my cool. I'm trying not to, listen, I'm trying not to lose it. But I need to tell about 15 people in this room. The Lord said that you won't even praise me like you did in the old season. You're not even going to worship. Do you hear the sound of worship that's come out of this place today? The sound of worship that's come out of this place doesn't sound like a pre-pandemic worship. The pre-pandemic worship says God has been good to me. Thank you Lord for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way. But this new worship is the worship of a cut people. This new worship is the worship of a crafted people. This new worship is the worship of a people that have been to the fire, that have been to hell and back, that have been to hell and have suffered and did not think you were going to make it out now listen it is only i'm about to run in this house it is only through my cutting that the lord birthed another level out of me it is only through my cutting that the lord birthed another dimension out of me now listen some of us are immature in here but mature people have learned to shout harder over closed doors than they do over open doors mature people have learned how to respond to when god says no and and in other words, watch this. I learned to praise God because when he cut me, he was rescuing me from myself. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say that before you leave this place today, I'm getting ready to take you to another level. And you're coming off of the surgery table because I'm getting ready to release the relationships that are going to cut out everything that is not like me. Somebody shout, cut it out. Somebody say, cut it out. Somebody say, cut it out. Somebody say, cut it out. Cut out the line, say, cut it out. Cut out the backbiting, say, cut it out. Cut out the jealousy, say, cut it out. Woo! Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. High five three people and say he's doing a new thing in me. Ah yeah yeah yeah. High five somebody say he's doing a new thing in me. Come on, tell us say he's doing a new thing in my spirit. He's doing a new thing in me. He's recreating me. He's shaping me. He's shifting me. Somebody say he's cutting me. Somebody say he's cutting me. He's cutting me. Listen. Tell somebody say I ain't even mad anymore. I'm not even mad anymore. I'm glad the Lord cut you out of my life. I'm glad the Lord shifted me. Because if he did not shift me, I couldn't praise him the way that I do. I ain't mad no more. Somebody praise him for the cutting. Bless 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 him for the shaking. Bless him for the shaking. Although it does not appear what we shall be, we know that when we see him, we will be just like him. But we will see him as he is. Cut me, Father, until I look like you. Cut me, Father, until I worship you. Cut me, Jesus. Listen, I just heard the Holy Ghost say this. The Holy Ghost said, if you can give me a mature praise, I'm going to take your life to another level. Now, I want for the next 60 seconds, everybody in this room that said, Lord, I'm ready for the cutting. Lord, I'm ready. Because I don't like the way the knife feels. But I can't have my destiny unless you cut out the capacity for dirt and mess out of my spirit. 
I don't want to hear any more gossip. I don't want to hear any more foolishness. Your problem ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not moving out of my destiny because of some gossip and some mess. Somebody said the devil is a liar. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Do you not know that the devil should have tried it before the pandemic? He should have tried it before the pandemic. But now that you got a room full of people that have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, they will fear no evil. Because if I didn't know he was with me, if I didn't know he was with me, somebody say, I know it for myself. I want you to take 60 seconds and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Open up your mouth. Come on. Come on. I feel something in here. Come on. I feel something breaking loose in here. Come on. Open up your mouth. Thank you, Lord. Now listen, I got to do this next worship. This next praise, the Lord said it's going to send out a frequency. It's going to send out a signal that's going to call forth your spiritual leaders, your spiritual fathers. Some of you in this room, I've been called to be your spiritual father. I've been called to lead you into the next level. I'm not talking about in the natural realm. I'm talking about in the spirit realm. And some of you are I don't know if I can receive. Let me tell you, I'm talking about your spirit, not your natural life, your spiritual life. The Lord said that there's stuff on the inside of you that's got to be released. I want everybody to stand all over this house. I feel something here. The Lord said there's something that's got to be released right now. You, The devil's been trying to kill you, woman of God. The Lord said that there's another level of anointing that's in your spirit. God said that your testimony must be written upon pages because what I have brought you out of is going to liberate generations. It's going to set people free. The Spirit of God said that the enemy's been trying to kill you since the age of four, but it did not work. The Spirit of the Lord said you survived the abuse, you survived the torment, but the Spirit of God said by this time next year, you're walking in a new anointing. Listen, I'm trying to hold my cool. Tell your neighbor, I need you to give me a little social distance because I, I got to release a praise. Woo. That's getting ready to send me to a, something. I feel something up in here, y'all. The Lord said, if you would take 60 seconds, close your eyes and go in the spirit and start praising me, I'm going to take your life to another level and I'm going to release spiritual fathers, mothers, spiritual individuals that are anointed to cut you into your next level and pull your destiny out of here. Take 60 seconds and start blessing the Lord. Come on. gonna get delivered by way of praise we're gonna do this and then we're gonna open the doors of the church and go home lift up your hands some of you right now are about to be delivered from father wounds you're about to be delivered from mother wounds some of you are about to be delivered 
from childhood abuse and trauma right now. I feel warfare in here. Lift up those hands and get ready to receive. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come in the volume of the book it is written of us that they that know their God shall do exploits. And right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to every witch, every warlock, every evil spirit, every unclean spirit, every demon, every devil, I announce myself Keith McQueen. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come to do warfare against you now. And I command every spirit of torment, every spirit of anger, every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of bitterness, every spirit of revenge, every spirit of jealousy, every spirit of lust, every spirit of perversion, every spirit of mental torment, depression, anxiety, Listen to the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of them now. Loose your hold now. Loose your hold now. Loose your hold now. Come out. I see that on some of you all. It's a spirit sitting in a cave in your soul. Loose them now. Loose them now. Loose them now. Loose them now. In the name of Jesus. Loose them now. Come on out. Come on out. Loose them now. Loose them now, in the name of Jesus. Loose them now. Let them go. Let them go. Let her go. Spirit of torment, let them go now. Let them go now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I see deliverance all through this house. In the name of Jesus. Rasiki. Zebrande bebeni ansaratani. Zubrababo pandi onsu. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of anger, break, 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 break. Break, break, break. Jealousy, malice, break, 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 break. I hear the Lord say, uh, He's delivering disassociative personality disorder. Jabrasa. Mind regulator, mind regulator, mind regulator, mind regulator. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Break right now, you tormenting spirit. I command you, loose your hold now. Loose your hold now. Loose your hold now. Loose your hold now. See, some of you all, you focus on demons coming out of people, and you don't realize it ain't about the demons that's coming out. It's about the destinies that are about to come out. It's about the purposes that have been tied up, that are being that are being loosed by the fire of God. That's Shaka that Abusho in the name of Jesus. There are destinies that have been tied up. Woo. I just heard the Lord say, I just released three businesses in this room through the power of deliverance. Through the power of deliverance. Through the power of deliverance. Listen, we gotta go. We're going to continue to work with those that are receiving deliverance. But I want everybody in here to release a shout. And when you release a shout, Jericho walls are going to come down right now out of your belly. The city of your soul. Everybody in here, release a shout. Release a shout. Hey, 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 hey. Release a shout. Hey, hey, hey. Release it.
There's at least four people in here that are supposed to be a part of this ministry. After surviving a pandemic, you ought to be able to recognize it's time for you to get into a place that will pull the destiny out of you. Come out of your seat and run to me now. Come out of your seat and run to me now. In this season, in this season, if you have not joined the if you have not joined this ministry, I'm opening the doors of the church for you now. Now. Powerhouse, y'all not making no noise. The saints are coming down. You are free in this place. Powerhouse, y'all not making no noise. What is heaven doing? I said, what is heaven doing? Listen. In a pandemic, you ain't got to beg me to obey God. You could be here today and gone today. I done figured that out. You need to get in the ark of safety. Woo! You need to get in the ark of safety. Four new family members make some noise. Uh uh, make some noise in this house. Stretch your hands towards them. Help me tell them, say, Welcome home. This is a place of no judgment. This is a place of acceptance for all people. I love you too. This is a place of supernatural power. This is a plan da baba sha. Ido bo 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 sha ta ta na na di ohu. A new anointing. The Lord said a new one. A new one. I ka na na baba sha ne. This cloud of heaviness that's over you. There's a cloud of heaviness that's over you. The Lord said I'm giving you the garment of praise. For the spirit of heaven is the Lord said, I taught you that as a little girl. You have to praise your way through this season. The Lord said, if you praise me, I'll give you strength. I loose a fresh anointing over all of you. And I decree that you're in a new season. I declare strength over your marriage. I declare strength over your vision, your future. I declare strength as you get in place and do what God has called you to do. We're going to push and pull the destiny out of you in Jesus' name. At this time, if you turn over here to my left and your right, they're gonna take you to the back to show you how to maintain what you've obtained. But you all wave your hand at them, follow them, follow them. Powerhouse, come on, make some noise. Let's get ready to go. Listen, I have two new books that are out. You can go on Amazon and order them now. I have two new books that are out. One is called Fresh Start. The other one is called The Intentional Life. You can go order them now. If you want a fresh start or you want to live through intentionality, I want to help you do that and be a blessing to you. Listen, we're getting ready to go. I don't want you to leave without the benediction. Whew. Were you blessed by this worship encounter today? 
Right now, before we leave, I want to give space for those that want to sow on the word to bring a seed down now. The Lord said, I hear the number 33. The number 33 represents the maturity and the matriculation of Jesus' ministry. The Lord said, I'm doing a maturing and a matriculating. I want you to get that seed and I want you to come down and bring that seed quickly under this anointing. I sense an unusual anointing. Woo! You can give by debit or credit card or you can give cash, cash app. Those of you that are watching us live that want to sow that seed, go ahead and do that now. We're getting ready to go. Oof. How many, who in here is currently going through new members class now? The plug. Who's currently in that in that round? I know we have a few in that round. Awesome, 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 awesome. Awesome. We're getting ready to go. Woo! I'm not going to make you grab hands with your neighbor. There's some still seeking deliverance. We're going to continue to work with them. Ah, ha, ha. I pray for all of you that are grieving on today. The strength of the Lord be released to you now. Oof. Let's stand as we prepare to go. Prophetess Korean, the Spirit of the Lord said that you're under a brand new anointing. That I call you to be a minister of fire. The Lord said there'll be fire in your hands and in your mouth. And as you lay hands upon the people, I'm going to burn cancers out of their body. I'm going to burn sickness and diseases out of their body. The Lord said that there's going to be a special anointing upon you to pull people out of wheelchairs. God's going to do something through you that the earth hadn't seen since Catherine Kuhlman and Amy McPherson. The Spirit of Grace said there are mantles that belong to you. The Lord said that some in your family were called to these mantles, but because of religiosity, they didn't fully embrace them. But the Lord said, you're going to catch the mantles and you're going to walk in and you're going to fulfill the generational anointing Woo! that is on your bloodline. God said, I'm going to sing through you. The Lord said, I'm going to dance through you. I'm going to preach through you. I'm going to pray through you. And lives will be transformed for my glory, saith the Spirit of the living God. I was coming for her next, but Prophet Lord already got her. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in this house. We thank you for this ministry called the Powerhouse. A place for all people to be activated in their prophetic destiny and in their purpose. God, I thank you for the place you're taking us to. I thank you for the new thing that you're doing in us. We thank you, God, for bringing us back to the house one more time to lift up your name. We give you the glory for your grace. Woo! We give you the glory for your mercy. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And Father, we bless you. We thank you because our ladder will be greater than our past. We declare we are healed. Spirit, sickness, and diseases are far from us. We decree it now in Jesus Christ's name. And until we meet here again next week, keep us covered under your blood. We praise you now in Jesus' name. All the degrees said is so. Come on, say it is so. Everybody say it is so. And so it is. On your way out, just wave at somebody and say, let the Lord cut you.